We have Nick Bartholomew with us. Nick is a well-known and respected Omaha restaurant tour uh, owner of Bartholomew Restaurant Holdings. Good morning, Nick. Welcome to the show. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Good. You know, there's really no subject that uh, Trenton and I, and I think I can throw Jorge in here as well, uh, that appeals to us more than eating. Uh, we are foodies, and we love a lot of your restaurants. Tell Thank us the you. concepts you have around town. Yeah, so, you know, um, I started eight years ago with Dandelion, or excuse me, with Over Easy, uh, the breakfast place in West Omaha on 168th and Q. I can walk there from my house. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, yeah. That's why we put it out there. I was a Millard West kid, and so we just had been in that neighborhood so long, we kind of knew that that's uh, what would fit, and the drive through has been great. You know, even through the pandemic, I think we were able to service that neighborhood really well, um, and so... I think we've, you know, built some proper roots there. Uh, and then after that, we went and opened um, Market House in the form of a Vachi space in the old market. Uh, we bought Which that. is awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, we spent a lot of time and effort on that, you know, and uh, got some really good chefs there that have now gone on to open Au Courant, Saddle Creek Breakfast, and Sternella uh, after, uh, after Market House burned down. Uh, and then once we were picking up the pieces of Market House after the old uh, old market fire, I opened Dandelion Pop Up um, to kind of showcase uh, different chefs in town or not in town, you know, to give them a platform to do interesting things or try something they hadn't tried before, you know, and just kind of see where it goes. And we've just had a ton of fun with that, you know, just meeting all the chefs in town and seeing the way that they prepare, seeing what they put out, you know, on those pop ups has just been awesome. You know, just you know, it's a good name for it because dandelion spread, right? And that was the hope, right? That was totally the hope is that we could be anywhere. You know, if uh, you found a great location for us, Trenton, we would love, you know, to just set up. And really, the industry we've found has been gearing up towards that. Like we've gotten calls from landlords all over the city saying, "Hey, how about a month? You know what I mean? How about six months while we're looking to lease or sell or something, and just give us some action?" And so I think dandelion's really cool in that way because there is no boundaries, and we could find any chef in town that has the time to to put something in. So we're really proud of the work that, you know, that's gone on there. Let's talk about that, that concept. When you, when you talk about pop-up restaurants now, there's a lot of restaurants that have been around yours included that have been around Omaha for a long time. And people, if they like a dish, one of your, your standard dishes, they want consistency. And, and there's a lot of restaurants that people just go back to and back mm-hmm. to regularly because they know that they're going to get that same dish. How does that affect the pop-up restaurant and define pop-up restaurant first. Yeah, definitely. So that's a great question. So a pop-up restaurant in this case came around to us as an ability for someone to showcase a skill, you know what I mean? And generally it might've been even a number two chef in a kitchen that hadn't had that opportunity to really grow himself because he was always listening to the head man or listening to the same menu um, courses that he had, you know, done for years and years. And so the pop-up idea was just to really allow some flexibility and some breathing room for these guys to spread, you know, because you hope that somebody learns from someone else and then goes on to grow their own thing and the culture grows uh, within the community. And really, um, that's where my love of pop-ups came from. And so I like to see what, like for one one week, Paul Kulik from Bullion came on and said, hey, we'd like to run crepes at the pop-up. Is that great? And I said, we'd love to have it. Why, you know, why did you choose crepes? And he said, he wanted to start doing brunch at Bullion and he didn't know how his customer base would feel about crepes since they had done other things. And it allowed him some of that flexibility to not do it on site, but, you know, not take himself so seriously somewhere else and do some fun things and meet a customer base on a level. And so I think that that's really been um, what we like the most about the pop-up is it's given that. Uh, so, so how do people know what's going to be there? How, how do they follow uh, yeah. Dandelion? So we've been kind <clears> of <throat> adhering to the underground uh, you know, mission statement a little bit. Once upon a time, we had a, a website. Secret knock, password. Exactly, exactly. White or the red, you know. And uh, we had a website, but <clears throat> we kind of felt like that kind of took us to mainstream a little bit. So now it's Facebook and Instagram, um, which is a good and a bad thing in lots of ways. But uh, so for this this week, for example, we had B&G on Friday. So we started announcing that last week and started teasing out pictures of things that B&G had had and done before. And then every Thursday, the day before the pop-up, we announced whatever the menu is going to be. 
even though we've teased out pictures of the food and people can kind of get a grasp of what's going on, uh, they have to wait till Thursday to kind of have that build up. Um, and then we started getting bigger, right? And the pop-ups are filled right now through October uh, for this year, and generally they are. So Saturdays is kind of where things started to migrate into. And for example, tonight we have a Puerto Rican um, pop-up tonight that's doing dinner and Latin dancing down there. We have there. Puerto Rican right here in the studio. Actually. <laughs> nice. Well, then you're going to know yeah, about right. the Ellie. Yeah, Ellie's tonight. And so mm-hmm. she's a ton of fun. Are you and, guys all related in Omaha? Or? So speaking of, uh, hey, Nick, you mentioned B&Gs. And uh, so you're bringing that concept back. Yes, sir. We've been really diligent about trying to find a location for it right now. Um, we like that space or the area that it was in, right? So we've been looking between 72nd and Dodge to about 90th and Dodge and seeing um, what's going on with Crossroads. We talked to um, Salsaritas for a while. There was a spot on Cass Street next to the White Barn Bar uh, that we put an offer in because uh, we really like that area. And so we really want to add a drive through want to add more convenience to that, you know, and just really give Omaha what they need in B&G, which is the access to it. Now, are you still planning on putting a new restaurant downtown? Aren't you working on a new concept? You know, we we the timing it has looked like it's not going to work out. Okay. But yes, we were working really hard to put something in the Indigo Hotel. Oh, okay. Um, but their deadlines were like June 1st, which is this weekend, um, and the construction really isn't done. And so one of the chefs that we had talked to was a guy from Alinea in Chicago. And so he was coming to Omaha. He was looking to make a name for himself, younger guy that I had met through travels and otherwise. And so he sat in on a few of those uh, conversations, and we were getting further down the line. But uh, you know how these things go. Timing sometimes just didn't work out. And so Indigo's, um, I think, not going to open until July now. Oh, okay. And then that kind of just – didn't work out with a project we're trying with B&G and some other things. So we ended up having to back off on that a little bit, but um, it's always in the wings. So if there's yeah. some developers that have some time, we got some good connections with well, some guys. Well, let's say, uh, I want to make sure we ta- uh, touch on your uh, space in the old market. You yeah. said that you had the market um, uh, house, house yes, which was right there by M's pub. It was destroyed in the fire, which was tragic. Cause I was there twice in the short time you were open, Thank loved you so much. it. Um, I was there three times. You bet you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you, you. You have ownership of that space. Yes, sir. And tell us about the new concept you have going there. That, that well, it's going in your space. Yeah, yeah. So gather is the new concept that's now taking over the market house space. Um, it's a gentleman who's been in and around Omaha for a long time. He was involved with the Seven Monkeys, the second generation of Seven Monkeys when they turned from Seven Monkeys to Seven M. Um, and then that gentleman went on and opened two restaurants in Jackson Hole, Wyoming or Park City, Utah, um, I think maybe one in each, something like that, and then um, did well, called it Gather, um, and you won't be, you'll you'll be pretty surprised when you see that menu, how similar it is to the Market House, right? Mm. So I think it's going to be a great fit, and those guys have done some beautiful, beautiful work in there right now. They're sparing no expense. They have a greenhouse grow room type of thing in the basement where they're going to try to get um, some of their drink garnishes and some of the stuff that they need for the kitchen um, down in the basement. And I think that they're even thinking about having a table down there where you could go eat um, in the basement and kind of be around what they're doing and their process. So those guys have been excellent. They're really uh, perfectionists. So I think once the restaurant is ready and open, you guys will be very, very impressed by the work that they've done in that room. Now you also, as we mentioned at the very beginning, have Over Easy. Yeah. Um, everyone loves that place. Thank you. Um, what What are the plans for Over Easy? Is that something that can grow, or are we Gosh, just going to yeah. be happy with that spot? So you know, we want nothing more than to grow, and we had signed a little bit of an agreement with the guys in La Vista uh, at City Ventures to kind of bring City Center up and going. Um, it got delayed because of COVID and some things, and it took ended up taking like three years, so that sort of paused out. Um, we've been talking a little bit with Countryside Village um, with the old um, Schwartz's Deli space or the current Schwartz's Deli space. Um, and we really like that community. We really love that area. We'd be given up a little bit in the way of um, a drive through in that case. Um, but really, I think that the outdoor seating and stuff couldn't really make up for it. Um, but we love that area and we are looking for currently over other places for over easies. Um, the funny part about that is the places we've looked that don't have a drive through or something else, we've thought about maybe calling them over medium, you know what I mean, or over hard, and then kind of just dictating the concept in that way, how we, um, you know, how it grows. But we're ready for more breakfast. I think, uh, you know, we've seen other breakfast places pop up with Pop-Tarts now. And so, uh, you know, we were the first to market with Pop-Tarts. I will state that here on the show. But, uh, you know, we're happy that Omaha embraced it, and now other places are having success for it. But I think it is time for second generation uh, over easy. So if there's any listeners that have a secret space for us, we're open to all calls. 
We'll, we'll bring you in over easy. Please. Hey, we just got another minute with Nick Bartholomew of Bartholomew Restaurant Holdings, and I'm just going to let you go out of here with a broad question, cool. and that is uh, your thoughts on the state of the Omaha restaurant culinary scene right now and where it's going to go over the next few years. Gosh, what an awesome question. I think that foundation's been laid. Right. I really appreciate the foundation that a lot of the people that came before us had laid because I don't think Omaha would have been able to be what it is now without that. And I look at Lincoln and kind of compare to Lincoln that I don't think Lincoln's laid much of a foundation in the way of a culinary talent, although they have great places. There's no really growth happening there that started with one person or three people and then kind of has built on itself. That was really the hope for Dandelion. The Dandelion hope was if you needed a platform, because I know as a young man, it was hard to get into the over easy situation when a hood costs $75,000 and a bank doesn't believe in you, you know? And so Dandelion in this case was produced and created so that people can step into that, say, here I am, this is what I do. Is there interest out there in what I do? So we really hope that from what we're seeing in Dandelion and the young young um, budding chefs and young budding startups uh, can come through there and really try their, you know, a hand at what Omaha can be and what they really like and get that feedback directly so it can grow. But I do believe we're on the right track. I think that it's, a, you know, pardon the pun, but it's a hungry business right now because coming out of a pandemic, the numbers are starting to get great. You know, we're having trouble finding people. So that's interesting, but that's only temporary. And I think that with help with people like Trenton and some imagination, you know, the places that can be restaurants, the sizes have changed. Like when when we were talking 10 years ago, I bet Midtown Crossing, when they were doing um, Loft 610 in those places, those were 3,000, 6,000 square foot spaces. Anymore, that really isn't sustainable and lots of for lots of reasons. So I think that um, creativity is going to rule the day here within the next five to six years, and people are going to find interesting ways to make it work um, in interesting spaces and really grow the neighborhoods in Omaha. And I think we're starting to see that bud now. So um, I'm excited and I'm hopeful for where we're headed, and I think it's great. If you question uh, Nick's energy and and and, and uh, view on the restaurant scene, go to the Omaha Food Lovers page on Facebook <laughs> with sixty or seventy thousand members it is it is an amazing uh page it is yeah we we love that place and nick um we could talk restaurants all day and uh we're going to we're going to sign you up for one of our long form uh, online only interviews here oh sometime wonderful thank you very much and go love deep to be back it. cool okay all righty nick go Barthol, gladiators by the way yeah this man is a youth baseball coach <laughs> he's sacrificed team, today his team is playing right now and while while answering questions on here, he's also glued to Game Changer, That's seeing right. how, his, how his kids are doing. That's so, right. Coach, we'll let you get back to the Thank game. Thank you so much, boys. Right. Appreciate your time. Nick Bartholomew, Bartholomew Restaurant Holding. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.